Hey, I'm Cece Summers, and this is Lurking for Love, a very wholesome, sweet game about a budding photographer who wants to, it looks like, take your picture um, for his portfolio, his very innocent work portfolio that he'll be giving to um, editorials for future work. I've decided that I live here now in denial land. Come visit. But look at this guy. Look at him. He just looks so friendly with his big crazy sharp teeth and giant unblinking eyes. <laughs> I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. It's gonna be so fine. Is this our room? It's very early 2000s. The doorbell. I rub my eyes and wipe away the dry crust. Consciousness came flooding back to me as I lay on top of my sweaty bed sheets. Texas is pretty different from where I lived before. I've been here for a few months now, but everything still feels new. I attempt to slide off the bed, my legs almost putting me off balance from my drowsy state. As much as I'd like to continue relaxing under the covers, I still have errands to do today. Hmm, let's freshen up first. I relieve myself and brush my teeth afterwards. I squint at the mirror. Ugh, I'm so tired I almost forgot who I was. My name is... That's me. Yep, that's me, all right. I follow up with my usual facial routine. As I scrub my face, I hear the doorbell again. Ugh. I go downstairs and make my way through the living room to reach the front door. I'm gonna look through the little peephole. Oh, it's him again. Hi, Cece. I got your mail by mistake again. I'm sure you didn't just break into my mailbox and take it out. Dang, that's the fifth time this month. I wonder what's going on at the post office. This guy is my next door neighbor. Honestly, I don't know anything about him other than that I've seen him work at a retail store close by. Thanks again for bringing me my mail. Um, oh no, it's happening again. Uh, I have a good feeling about Jacob, but then again, this happens just every character named Jack is fucking evil as shit. So what are we thinking? I'm gonna go with Jack. That seems to be a safe evil bet. <laughs> Jacob, fuck! <laughs> I should have trusted my instincts! <laughs> oh, sorry, Jacob. I'm not the best with names. After he hands over the package and envelopes, I place my mail on my coffee table to open, but then I noticed... Jacob is still standing there at my doorway. Well, let's make up for the fact that we called him the wrong name. <laughs> So, Jacob, how's your day been going? Oh, uh, I've been doing okay. I've been needing to check out this one movie for a while. It's called Revenge of the Jackalopes. <laughs> Sounds like one of those cheesy old horror films. Yeah, it's an obscure one from the 1950s. It was directed by the same guy who made the movie Invasion of the Schmange... Schmanges? Schmanges? I don't know. I don't think I want to know. <laughs> he also directed the movie Attack of the Blorbo Worms. I like that one. I definitely don't recognize any of these movies he's talking about. It won't let me... It sounds like a pretty interesting movie. Well, I gotta get back to... <laughs> Invasion of the Schmanges had its positives too, but I felt like the writing in Attack of the Blorbo Worms was a little more consistent. Cool, uh, I think if they balance more of the pacing and change some of the dialogue, the details of why the Schmanges were invading would have made more sense. Hey, Jacob? Hmm? Your movie knowledge is great, but I gotta run some errands today, so... Oh, uh, sorry about my rambling. Didn't mean to hold you up. It's alright. Bye, Jacob. Goodbye, Cece. 
Fucking ominous for no reason. <laughs> See you around. I close my door and focus back to my mail. Let's see here. Bills are in the envelopes, but my package is something I've been waiting for. I open the box and... Yes, my new band t-shirt came. Bewitched Blood. I got into this band recently called Bewitched Blood. They played locally here a few months ago, but they weren't selling merch at the time. Looks like they got popular pretty fast. Now their shirts are almost out of stock on their website. I'll have to wear this out soon. Maybe I'll find some other fans in the area. But for now, I gotta catch up with work a bit. Having a remote online job has its pros and cons. It's nice I get to work from home, but sitting down all day does take a toll on my back. Most of it involves sending documents back and forth and once in a while having to print them. I wish ink cartridges weren't so expensive. <laughs> Relatable. Ugh, I can feel my stomach growl. I managed to get quite a good chunk of work done for today. My fridge has been nearly cleaned out for a while. It's about time I go get some groceries. I hop into my car and went to the nearby market. I grab a cart and make my way through each aisle. I get some canned foods, some pastas, and a few of my favorite snacks. As I pass by the meat section, I see a familiar figure. Is it Tate? It's Jacob. He seems to be deep in thought. Tomato, tomato. Uh, what's, what's up, Jacob? I stand a bit closer to the meats and catch my neighbor's attention pretty quickly. Well, howdy, Cece. Nice seeing you again so soon. Hello again. Just here picking up some groceries. I'm way overdue. During the brief pause of our conversation, I scan over the various shades of red behind the glass. Jacob seems to be staring intently at the fish fillets. So, Jacob, you like seafood? I love seafood. I've been in the mood for salmon lately. He fidgets in his spot for a moment. Hey, uh, I plan on cooking the salmon tonight, and I was wondering, maybe you want to come over for dinner? Ah, I cook so much that I always have leftovers, so it'd be nice to share this with someone else. You can join me for movie night, too, while we eat together. Aw, that sounds like a great time, Jacob. This sounds very wholesome and heartwarming. And nothing bad's gonna happen. Sure. This guy is offering free dinner and a movie? Honestly, I'll take it. Now I don't have to cook for myself tonight. Plus, he seems like a nice guy. I wouldn't mind getting to know him more. That's great. How does 6 p.m. sound? I'll be sure to have the salmon done before you get there. Yeah, sounds good. I'll see you then. I pay for my groceries, pack them into my car, and drive home. After putting all my groceries away, I let myself have a light snack so I can save my appetite for later. In the meantime, I'll just catch up with one of my current TV shows. Looks like it's 6 p.m. now. I'll start heading over to Jacob's house. Next to my house was Jacob's bungalow. Once in a while, I do see him sitting on his patio chair. Sometimes he'll even wave to me after I come home. I knock on his door. I'm digging the witch a lantern. <laughs> I hear some clicking and budging until... Cece, please come on in. Make yourself at home. Get cozy on the couch if you'd like. I scan around the small living room. His modern TV sticks out from the rustic appearance of everything else. Also, I see a fish tank. I know I said the salmon was going to be done before you get here, but I ended up forgetting one of the ingredients, so I had to make an extra trip back to the store. Dang, that must have been pretty annoying. Yeah, but it was worth it. I wanted to make sure everything was perfect. For you. Okay, Jacob. <laughs> Suddenly, the kitchen timer went off. The aroma of cooked fish filled the room. It's just about done now. Let me set up our plates. He walked over to his small kitchen and took out the salmon from the oven. The aroma was even stronger now, and my stomach growls in response. Someone's hungry. I can hear you all the way from here. Jacob comes over to the couch and sits next to me, handing over my plate. Thanks. My food looks like it came straight out of one of those fancy cooking magazines. It is very pink still. Very pink. 
It looks good, but the real question is, does it taste good? I cut a flaky piece off of the side of my fork and put it in my mouth. Mmm, tastes like sleeping pills. <laughs> Jacob, this is delicious. This tastes even better than fish I've had at restaurants. Really? That's sweet of you to say, Cece. I knew that making that extra store trip was worth it. Now, let me go start up the movie. <laughs> Look at this adorable little guy. <laughs> We both focus on the screen as we eat our dinner together. This Revenge of the Jackalopes movie did have cheesy acting and effects as I expected, but I found it more charming than outright bad. We both finish our dinner pretty early into the movie, but at least I can give my full focus on the plot now. From what I'm understanding, the Jackalopes are tired of being hunted and experimented on, and now they're rampaging the Midwest. Oh wow, a guy got his eyes gouged out by a pair of antlers. This better not give him any fucking ideas. <laughs> While I'm distracted, I feel weight shifting behind me. Then, something grazing against the back of my head. Jacob's arm is wrapped around the top of the couch. His hand is resting on my shoulder. Did he forget I was here, or is this deliberate? It's deliberate. Why would he... Ver Come on. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, we're here on a date, right? Like... I stay perfectly still, calculating his movements. As if he read my mind, I could feel his hand rubbing my shoulder in a circular motion. It was relaxing. I felt myself zoning out toward the end of the movie. My eyes were fluttering. That's weird. It doesn't seem close to my usual bedtime, and yet... Tired? Yeah, it was that special extra ingredient you added to the salmon. Yeah. He gently wraps his arm completely around me. My head rests against his shoulder. His body is warm. Sleep well, sunshine. All right, Jack. I knew your name was Jack. I could feel myself tossing and turning in my sleep. Rubbing my eyes. I stretch my limbs and... This is not my house. Morning, Cece. Did you sleep okay? Hey, what happened last night? Oh, you fell asleep during the end of the movie. I didn't want to disrupt you, so I let you sleep here. He stepped closer and grabbed something draped across my shoulders. It was a blanket. I didn't want you feeling cold in the middle of the night, so I sort of tucked you in. I also made us some breakfast. It's nothing special, just some eggs and toast. You look out his window. It's still dark out. What time is it? How long was I asleep for? Hmm, let's see. Well, we finished the movie around 8 p.m., which is when you fell asleep. Right now it's 4.35 a.m. Why are you making eggs and toast at 4.30 in the fucking morning? I was asleep for eight hours? Yep, you got a full night's rest. That's really strange. I usually fall asleep much later than that. How come you're awake so early? My sleep schedule is kind of everywhere. I'm a night owl. Plus, I wanted to watch the sunrise. Jacob walks over to his kitchen and comes back with two plates. Here, you'll think better after you eat. Why, so you can drug me some more? I know your tricks. Actually, I think I should start heading back home now. Thanks again for the movie night and the breakfast. I still feel bad for sleeping here on accident. I feel like I've overstayed my welcome. I feel so awkward sleeping over at this man's house without consulting him first. Don't worry about it, Cece. Just remember you're always welcomed here. I make my way towards his front door to leave, but... Why are there so many locks? Hmm. I wonder. Here, let me get those for you. He unlocks each piece of security quite slowly, as if he's purposefully taking his sweet time with it. Finally, he takes out a ring of small keys from his pocket and unlocks the last piece. Bye, Cece. Have a good day. Thank you for locking me in your house. <laughs> Thanks. Um, you too. I walk back toward my house. It's still dark outside and I find myself yawning as I get to my front door. Fucking eyeball! <laughs> I make my way up to my room. Even though I slept a whole eight hours, I still feel a little drowsy. I got settled down in bed. My mind begins to wander. 
Something about my neighbor does feel off. Who needs that many locks on a door? But I guess I can't blame them. I've heard of some people going missing in this area. Hmm, what a coincidence. There hasn't been another missing person for a while, though. I don't have the energy to overthink things right now. I shut my eyes and fall asleep. The doorbell wakes me from my slumber. I feel groggy as I rub my eyes. After freshening up in the bathroom, I head towards the front door once again. Hi, I need you to sign this. Okay, grumpy ass. <laughs> I'm so used to seeing a different blonde guy show up at my door that for once, I was not expecting the mailman. I don't think I've seen this one around before though. Okay, right here? Yeah. I gave him back the clipboard, but before handing over my package, he scans over the paper carefully. CC, cute name you got there. Okay, man bun. Um, thanks? Name's Austin. You're new in town, yeah? Austin? And you live in Texas? Well, I moved here just a few months ago. Ah, that explains it. I should have known you ain't from around here. Don't get too many people like you in this town. What do you mean by that? Nothing. Just not too many hotties live in here, you know? And you know what makes me such a slam and hottie? My Taco Bell t-shirt. Because I'm a slut for Taco Bell. Look, can I just have my package now? I don't have time for this. Jeez, calm down, Cece. Loosen up a bit. You should be thankful someone is talking to you. Excuse you, I just had a date with a perfectly sound, rational man, like, who did not drug me with salmon last night. I think I'm fine. <laughs> oh yeah? How so? Don't I get lonesome around here, being new and all? I can be your first friend. He leans an arm against my doorway, bringing his body closer to me. And if you give me a chance, I can even be your boyfriend. Oh! In the corner of my eye, I see Austin's free hand slither its way around my waist. Before I could speak, another man grabs Austin's shoulder and tugs him away from me. Hey, are you gonna give her the package or not? Oh, it's blonde against blonde. And, to no one's surprise, the blonde one with the blue eyes is the one we don't trust right now. <laughs> Who the hell are you? It doesn't matter. Give her the package. Austin looks down at Jacob, not moving an inch. Well, it just so happens that this is the last trip I need to make for today. I don't mind doing a little overtime. Give her the damn package and get your creepy ass out of here. You got that? Yeah. Austin, get the fuck out of here. There's only room for one creepy ass in my life. <laughs> Jacob's voice boomed in my chest. I've never heard him raise his voice like that before. All right, geez, don't need to make a scene. Relax. Austin carelessly tosses my package to me, despite the label saying fragile. He walks back to his mail truck. Before driving off, he gives a wink in my direction. I feel like he's staring into my soul, and he does not like what he sees. It looks like Jacob saw that too, and raises a middle finger at him before he drives off. Um, hey Jacob. That guy didn't touch you, right? Well, he had his hand around me, but I was ready to push him away. I could see Jacob shaking a bit. If that asshole ever bothers you again, you let me know, okay? Okay, Jacob. I... fine. <laughs> it's probably a good idea to have someone close by as a helpful hand, or even a witness. If having another person around me works, then soon enough that creepy mailman will fuck off for good, or at least treat me with respect. Thanks, Jacob. I look down at my box. But hey, at least my mail arrived at my door this time. He stays quiet. Yeah. Okay, Jacob, I'll see you later. Goodbye, Cece. Bye, Jacob. I close my front door and begin opening my package. Cutting open the tape, I look into the contents inside and find... My new Mushin kitty mug and matching bowl! <laughs> Yay! I'm glad these didn't get damaged during shipping or with Austin's poor handling. 
I set my new mug and bowl in my kitchen to use later. Since today is my day off, I think it would be a good time to explore the town. The Texas heat has kept me indoors for a while, but since it's autumn, the weather has gotten cooler. At least for that day, because in Texas, there is no consistency. It's... you get one day of one type of weather, and then the next is completely different. Even if... even if you... only if you only get that day. Like, like yesterday. Okay. Yesterday. It was a beautiful day, a beautiful spring day. It was like 73 degrees, it was sunny, there was a light breeze, and then like 3.30 hit, and it was pitch black, and there was a tornado that touched out. <laughs> like... <laughs> so, you gotta take advantage of the nice days while they're there. <laughs> I make my way upstairs to get properly dressed and walk to the park. This park in the neighborhood has a few trails, some benches, and a playground. A lot of orange trees and colorful flowers spread along the path I'm walking on. It's really nice to get out of the house for a little while. I take in a deep breath of fresh air and the surrounding noise of the wind, the birds, and... A camera shutter? It looks like my neighbor is here at the park too. What a surprise! Another crazy coincidence! I didn't know he was into photography. His camera is aimed in my direction. He stops taking pictures when our gazes meet each other. Cece, nice seeing you so soon. Looks like it. Looks like it's really nice to see me. <laughs> Were you taking pictures of me? No, I'm taking pictures of the fountain. Don't fucking gaslight me, bitch. Alright, but is it okay if you point the camera in another direction? He takes in a deep breath and looks down at his camera. Sure, sorry about that. I walk away from the fountain and follow a different path. The fallen leaves give a nice crunch underneath each of my steps. I sit myself down at a nearby bench. This park is nice, but I'm curious what else the town has to offer. I get out my phone and search for what stores are nearby. Other than the grocery store and a small retail outlet, looks like there's a mall. The day is still young, time to head back. As I make my way back home, I grab my car keys and drive my way to the local mall. I'm surprised to find a pop topic shop inside the mall. I haven't been inside one of these since I was a teenager. The walls were covered in shirt designs for sale, ranging from bands, cartoons, and anime. I turn to my left to spot a whole section dedicated to plushies. Wait, is that? A jumbo sized Mushin plush? <laughs> I squeeze the plush, then give it a big hug. Oh. My. God. It's so squishy. I slam my money down on the counter and pay for my new plush. No way was I gonna leave without him. After some further browsing of the other shops, I didn't see anything else that interested me. Although the food court looks pretty good. I was so busy shopping I completely forgot to have lunch. It's already dinner time. I scan over the different options available and a red glowing sign catches my eye. Behind the glass, there's an array of noodles, rice, and all sorts of different veggies and meats. Pad crab... Ugh. Pork larb? I feel like somebody's fucking with me right now. <laughs> Thai food sounds great right now. I step into the line and wait among the other customers. So what are you getting? Hmm? I turn to the voice behind me. Man, not this guy. I said, what are you getting? Chinese food? No, this is the line for Thai food. Same thing. Yeah. So what's good here? I was just gonna get some takeout from here, maybe some pork larb. It looks good. What's that? It's a dish with seasoned pork mixed with some chili and vegetables. You can wrap it in some lettuce and eat it like that, or you can eat it with a side of rice. It's really good. Hmm. What else is there? I point at the large TV screens behind the workers. Well, they do have a giant menu you can read from Austin. Oh, you remembered my name? Ugh. Seriously? I rolled my eyes and turned away from him. Can't this line move any faster? Aw, oh, come on now. I think it's really sweet you remembered. We only just met and now you're already thinking about me. 
I'm flattered, Cece. <laughs> Fuck off. He's not even worth it. He's not even worth the breath. Hey, it's rude to ignore someone when they're talking to you. Cece. You're being a stick in the mud. Come on now. Tell you what, how about I give you my number? I already remember your address. I can pick you up anytime you want. Just give me a call. That's so creepy. <laughs> Ugh, does this creep ever shut up? Who even says shit like this? Austin takes out a crusty napkin and pen from his pocket. He scribbled down his number and hands it to me. I don't want it. <laughs> oh, I get it now. You ain't much of a phone caller, huh? It's fine, I understand. Is anyone much of a phone caller? I fucking hate talking on the phone. I hate it so much. <laughs> How about we just text? Or would you rather have me come over instead? Fuck off, Austin. Take my number. No. Oh. Hmm. What an interesting mall there is here. I like the chairs and uh, tables that are around. They are very interesting to look at. <laughs> Take my number. No. Take my number. No. 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 I don't want it. Ugh, fine. Give me the goddamn number. <laughs> it's clear this guy isn't gonna leave me alone. Looks like I'll play along, even if it means feeding his already big ego. I swipe the napkin out of his hand and crumple it into my pocket. Hopefully, that'll shut him up. It won't. But we can throw it away directly in front of him. I knew you wanted me. I'll see you around, Cece. I'm not really in the mood for Chinese food. <sighs> Finally, that creep left. I let out a sigh and inch my way forward in line. Eventually, I order my pork larb and some egg rolls to go. I think I'd rather get my dinner in peace at home than here. I drive back home and I can feel my stomach rumble. The moon is already out by the time I walk through my door. I set my Mushin plush on the couch and search through the plastic bag full of food. Yikes. The sauce for the egg rolls leaked everywhere. The styrofoam box is drenched. Hmm. I do have that Mushin dinnerware set. I'll just scoop my food into that. I open my cupboards and grab the matching bowl and mug. I slide my dinner into the clean bowl and pour myself a glass of refreshing water. Water droplets spilt right onto my shirt. What? My mug is chipped. Was that there before? No. Fucking Jacob. Thanks, Jacob. Hmm. Austin did toss me my package instead of just handing it over. Unless maybe he dropped the box before ringing my doorbell? Guess I'll just turn this into a pencil holder later. I bring my dinner to my office and turn on my PC. I set my dinner down at my desk and eat while browsing the web. It's been a while since I've checked my friend's space account. Let's see what's new. I think we, I think we like Mushin. Everything looks about the same until I open my notification box. Wow, this person liked a lot of posts I made. Looks like I received a friend request from the user named Salmon VHS. Did he videotape us while we were knocked unconscious on his couch? I click on his profile. Oh, it's my neighbor's profile. I live within the Rockford, Texas area. Okay, that's not too horribly close to me, but closer than I would want it to be. <laughs> Most of his posts are him advertising his photography business. Apparently, he also fixes computers. He does come off as someone who's tech savvy. What is this fucking picture? I love it so much. I scroll down and notice that his friends list only had two people. One account is named John Alden, probably one of Jacob's family members. The second profile seems to be a meme account. He's gotten the most comments under a post about a lost TV show he's been archiving. Something called Bappy the Horse? Never heard of it. But it looks like a lot of people were thankful he posted lost footage from this 1960s cartoon. 
Other than that, and the occasional reblog by John Alden, he doesn't seem to get any other interactions. I hover my mouse over the request notification. Sure, go ahead. He seems like a lonely guy. I'm sure it wouldn't hurt to add him. I do want to make more friends around here too, so this is a win-win. I click the Accept Friend Request button and refresh my page. Maybe he can tell me more about his Bappy the Horse cartoon he found. It'll be a refreshing read during my work break. Speaking of work... I open up my work document. I have to make sure I get this printed and shipped out soon. Yes, this is... Very important. Very important work document. I click the print out button and await my papers. Hmm? A notification pops up on my screen. Out of ink. Well, looks like I'll just have to buy some tomorrow morning. I finish the remainder of my Thai food and leave the office with my bowl. Walking across the room, my foot steps on something. I pick up the envelope. A love letter? For me? Where? Where was it? Where in my house was this? <laughs> the outside is adorned with drawings of red hearts. How nice. The back of the envelope has a heart sticker on the flap. I peel it away and open it. Where was this? Like, please tell me that we have a mail slot and this was laying by the front door. <laughs> because otherwise, why are we not concerned about how this note got here? <laughs> to my darling, one of my favorite pieces of poetry reminds my of you. <laughs> Among the vast oceans and foamy waves, the salty air and gray storms, I've yet to come across another being within these tides that capture me so. No pristine shine of scales nor silver can tempt me, for the true treasure I seek is you. Love, your secret admirer. I tried to draw you a swordfish. <laughs> Thanks, Jacob. Aw, that's sweet. The little doodles are cute too. Looks like they've been drawn on with glitter pens. Aw, I love glitter pens. <laughs> to be honest, I didn't expect to gain someone's attention so quickly. But whoever this person is, they've definitely got my attention too. I smile to myself and head upstairs. I fold the letter back into the envelope and place it on my nightstand. I tuck myself into bed and slowly doze off. The sunshine pierces through my curtains and covers my face. I stretch out my limbs and shift myself off my bed. It's around the afternoon. Sleeping in feels so nice. But I still need to go out today. I have to get the printer ink. Hmm, before I do that, I smell a little ripe. I'll take a shower before I leave. I gather up some clean clothes and came across my Bewitched Blood t-shirt. Oh yeah, I should wear this today. I fold my shirt and bring it along with me to the bathroom. I place my clothes by the sink and made sure to use the bathroom and brush my teeth. Turning the knob, warm water sprays out of the shower head. I undress and step right in. Ah, this is nice. I needed this. I lather up my body in soap to wash off the grime. Why am I grimy? Why am I grimy? Why did I go so long without taking a shower? I reach for my new bottle of shampoo, but something looks off. Why is some of it already gone? Did it leak out? Quirked up. Well, that's annoying. I guess the bottle is faulty or something. Is this like going to give me a quirk? Am I gonna fucking be able to fly after using it? Like, what is this? <laughs> I squeezed a bit out into my palm and started washing my hair. Woo, all clean. I dried myself off with my towel and started putting on my set of clothes. I look in the mirror and my new shirt fits great. I grab my keys and head out the door to the retail store. I comb through the various aisles to reach the electronics section. Hmm, let's see here. Need help with anything, CC? How many jobs do you have, Jacob? <laughs> I jump from my spot. Oh, gosh, hey, Jacob. He seemed to notice my startled expression. Oh, I didn't mean to scare you. I kind of have that effect on people sometimes. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, CC, what are you looking for? Uh, printer ink, friend. I ran out of black ink for my printer if you have the... Yeah, we have those in stock. Let me go grab one for you. How did you know what printer I have, Jacob? Whoa. I mean, it's good to know this place has good customer service. In a flash, he comes back with a big smile on his face. 
I got it. Here you go, Cece. He hands me the cartridge box. I look over the number model. This is the exact one I needed for my printer. Yep, just like you wanted. But how did you know what brand I use and the number type? This type of ink is bought really often, so I took a lucky guess. Well, thank you for finding the ink I need. It's no problem at all, Cece. I'm really glad to help. And this might sound weird, but did you shower today? <laughs> That's not a weird question at all, Jacob. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, I did. Why? When you stand by me, I can smell you. Come on, Jacob. <laughs> Wait, I thought I washed myself thoroughly. Do I stink that bad? No, no, not like that. I meant that you smell nice. You smell fresh and clean, like a soft ocean breeze on a summer's night. <laughs> it's really nice. Thank you? Weirdo. Both of us turned our heads next to us. Oh, no. Do you talk to everyone you meet like that? called a compliment. Not that you would know what that is. Nah, you're fucking weird, man. Yeah, Jacob, you're the only one who's weird here. <laughs> Look who's talking, mister. I like wrapping my arms around strangers. <laughs> oh yeah? That's real funny coming from someone who keeps taking Cece's mail. <gasps> no. Jacob, you're not taking my mail. It's delivered to the wrong place, right? Right? You fu- Uh-uh, you better watch that mouth of yours to a customer. Wait, what? Jacob, you were deliberately taking my mail? Yeah, Jacob, tell Cece why you keep taking hers mail. I only took your mail to keep it away from this moron. I saw this guy open people's packages before. I didn't want that happening to you, so I made sure to keep your mail safe with me. I'm completely shocked. Austin, is this true? The taller man rolled his eyes. No, this guy's a creep and a liar. I wouldn't be surprised if he was taking your mail just to get closer to you. Then how do you explain this? Jacob took out his phone and pulled up a video he recorded. The footage shows Austin tearing into multiple envelopes, opening what looks like birthday cards, and taking the money out of it. I didn't know he knew about that. <laughs> awesome. Look, that was the only time. No, you did this multiple times. <laughs> Jacob then opens a folder with multiple videos of Austin's behavior. Yeah, not so tough now, huh? That's... Really fucking creepy, man. <laughs> I mean, yes, but also stop stealing from people's mail. No, not when you're committing a crime. Ugh, whatever, man. Look, I won't be doing that ever again. I gotta keep this job. So you better delete those videos, or else. Or else what? Are you threatening me? Or else I'll make your life a living hell. How about that? Would you like me to call security? Nah, I'm good. As Austin leaves, he purposefully bumps his hip against the table of items on display, knocking the boxes onto the ground. Oops. <laughs> Jacob grits his teeth and clenches his hands into shaky fists. Fucking asshole. He starts stacking everything back up again. I give him a hand and pick up the remaining boxes. Thanks, Cece. Didn't think we had to go through that today. But, uh, enjoy your printer ink. Let me know if you need help looking for anything else. Actually, I do have a question. Why haven't you reported Austin about him stealing? I tried to, but the post office doesn't believe me, even with the videos I took. It doesn't sound like they don't believe you. It just sounds like they don't care enough to do anything about it. They said the footage was captured from too far away, so they can't completely confirm whether it's him or not in the video. Jacob pulls out his phone again, showing me some of the other videos he took. It's bullshit. It's so obviously him. Same douchey man bun, same hair color. It's him. Admittedly, the footage does look a bit grainy, but it's definitely Austin. It's dumb the post office doesn't believe you. I know, right? 
I would have used my better cameras to record this, but they're being used for something else. We're going to pretend like that wasn't super suspicious. <laughs> Anyways, I should probably get back to work. See you around, CZ. He puts his phone back into his pocket and awkwardly smiles at me. I wave goodbye to him as I walk toward the checkout area. After paying for my ink, I make my way back home, still taken aback by what happened. Feels nice to be back home so quick. I place my ink cartridge in my office to replace later. Right now, I'm starving. I make myself a quick bowl of cereal and sit down on my couch. I turn on my TV and flip through the various channels. Crimson Lake open to the public again. News 69. Nice. In other news, police have finished their investigation at Crimson Lake. All remains of the body have been uncovered. The identity was of a man in his late 20s named Jesse Hewitt. He was found with over 60 stab wounds to the chest, rope burns around his wrists, and missing eyes. Autopsy reports say his heart was missing from his chest. Another case from a year ago had similar results. Amy Fernandez was another victim who suffered a similar fate, her body also being absent of a heart. Whoever has been doing these killings has always left the chest cavity of the victims empty. Police are still on the lookout for this unknown killer, but the crime scene has been thoroughly searched. Crimson Lake is now open again to the public. Yay, let's go swimming in the murder lake! <laughs> wow, that's gruesome. The name Jesse Hewitt is familiar. I do recall reading about this in an article online. He went missing about three months ago before I moved here. It's a shame he had to die in such a brutal way. Open or not, I don't think I'll be visiting that lake anytime soon. I picked up my remote and changed the channel to something more happy. Yay, cartoons! Oh look, it's Brave the Scaredy Dog. The network is even playing one of my favorites, Sammy the Scaredy Cat. In this episode, he has to save his owners from a shadow demon. Even though he's kidnapped Sammy's owners, the demon never meant any harm. He was just lonely. And that makes it okay, you know? Like, when you kidnap because you're lonely, and not for any other reason, it's fine. In a court of law that, like, holds up, you'll be out in no time. I open my eyes to the sound of loud ringing. Whoa, I must have dozed off. I take out my phone from my pocket. The number calling me doesn't look like anyone I know. I don't like answering the phone, especially when I don't know the person. It's probably just spam. I press the red button. It's pretty dark out. I check my wall clock. 8.05. I guess I can make myself a late dinner. I go ahead and make myself a quick sandwich. Ah, that hits the spot. My mail slot. An envelope falls onto the floor. Wait, are they still out there? Dang, whoever left this has fast legs. I pick up the envelope. Another love letter. I peel the sticker and fold out the paper. To my darling, you really are sunshine on a cloudy day. And I hope every time you wake up in the morning, you'll think about my letters. I can't stop thinking about you and your cute smile. You make me so happy. More than you know. I love you very much. Hugs and kisses, your secret admirer. P.S. Bewitched Blood is a great band. Aw, aw, I like the puppy dog. <laughs> wow, so they also enjoy Bewitched Blood? Awesome! How'd they know I like that band? Wait, my shirt. The only place I went today is that retail store. Could my secret admirer be an employee? Couldn't possibly be the guy who loves seafood and his profile picture is of a fish and his first poem had fishes and he drew a swordfish on it. Can't be that guy. Or maybe it was another customer. Whoever they are, they've got good taste in music. I finish the rest of my sandwich and head upstairs. I can hear the soft pitter-patter of rain against my windows. This is perfect sleeping weather. I put the new love letter next to the previous one and tuck myself into bed. It does feel nice to be loved. My heart is racing when I jolt out of bed. Looks like that rainy weather became a storm. I check the time on my phone. 9.45 a.m. I still have to print out that work document. I guess I'll go get it freshened up. As I make my way downstairs, I immediately head to my office to replace the old cartridge. 
I flip the hood up on my printer and take out the old cartridge. I reach into the plastic bag to take out the new cartridge, but the box is already open? It's empty. Hold on. I look at the date of the cartridge in my hand. Yeah, this is the new one. I guess I must have replaced my cartridge last night and forgot. I put the new cartridge back inside the printer. I print out my work document, fold it in an envelope, and add a stamp. I'll bring this to the post office later. Speaking of mail, I should check my front porch for any new packages. I took in the refreshing smell of rain. Small puddles formed along the sidewalk to my house. I don't see any mail for myself, but I do see Austin nearby. Huh, <laughs> sucks to be him right now. <laughs> Wait, what's he doing? What the hell? He's kicking the packages to people's doors. I put on my coat and shoes and run outside into the pouring rain. Hey, asshole, what makes you think that's okay? Huh? Cece? What the hell do you mean? You're kicking people's packages. You're gonna break whatever's inside. And? Not my problem. I'll just let them believe the seller didn't package it properly. The boxes are all soaked in water and mud. How could you think any of this is okay? Look, my hands are already dirty. I don't need them wet, too. And I dropped the box by accident. It was heavy. It's just easier to kick it to Jacob's door. He continues kicking the box forward. There's a sticker on the side of the box that reads fragile. Sounds like there's shattered glass inside. Even if Austin hates Jacob, this is not professional at all. If Austin is willing to do this to my neighbor's package, I'm sure he's willing to do this to anyone. Hey, what are you doing? I ring my neighbor's doorbell. Jacob pokes his head out the door with a grin. Good morning, Cece. What's up? I caught Austin kicking your package around. He's... He did what? <laughs> Probably damaged all the machine merch that is inevitably inside that box. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Hey, back off. I'm trying to do my job. You ain't doing shit. Look how banged up my package is. You did this on purpose. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Since you're here, I'll just leave the box where it is. I don't have time for this. Austin scurries back to his mail truck. As he turns his keys, he gives me a hard stare. Are you happy now, Cece? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty okay about this. <laughs> Austin steps on the gas pedal and tries to get as far away from us as possible. I'm gonna get you fired, asshole. The rain continues to pour down on us. Jacob doesn't seem bothered, probably too angry to care. He lifts his soaked box from the muddy ground and walks back to his porch. I wish Austin wasn't such a jerk. I'm real sorry this happened to you, Jacob. He seemed to calm down a bit from my voice. I'm glad you told me what happened. Didn't expect him to be any lower of a scumbag than he already is. My neighbor opens his front door and places his wet box on the floor mat. Whoa, Cece, over here. We huddle under his porch roof. Lightning strikes were completely visible over our heads. That was a real close one. I'm glad you're safe. Come on, Cece, you should come inside until the storm passes. Yeah, that's way too far of a walk to get back to my own house. Way too far. Well, we're going to have to make a good decision or a bad decision next time. <laughs> You know, I have a good feeling about Jacob. He doesn't give me the creeps at all. <laughs> I'm thinking he's a great guy. Um, very protective, like such a white knight. And I am so excited for our blossoming romance. I will not be taking any comments to the contrary. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. you